Well, I just I listened to. I don't want to miss the mistake I made last time with the green and called him comrade. <laughs> you <laughs> bio bro- brother, brother Peter. Okay. Uh, just says something about the Iraq War, which I found interesting because he actually admits the fact that he, he tended to side with America invading Iraq. Yeah. because of the weapons of mass destruction that means he's not non-violent it's a choice no. you choose you choose your violence that's what he's just said here in this debate uh, it, the, the, the invasion of Iraq has killed hundreds of thousands and before that the sanctions killed far more the number of children that suffered because of those sanctions it's been calculated that possibly a million people have died as a result of the sanctions and the bombing and the war that to me is violence which I oppose I would never support that kind of violence. And I'll tell you something. The reason why the Americans thought, or they, they believed that the Saddam had the weapons, is because the Americans had the receipts. Because they provided him with the weapons to fight Iran. As you re- if you remember, Iran was the main enemy at the time, and to counterbalance it, the Americans supported Saddam Hussein. There's the photograph of uh, uh, Rumsfeld shaking hands. With, uh, with Saddam Hussein when they were making the nice deals. When he was a friend of the West all those killings that you referred to which are true and we condemn gassing poor innocent people it was okay as long as he was doing it in the context of a regime that defended the interests of America in that region he invades Kuwait and thereby getting control of a lot more oil and becoming a threat that's when they invade and uh, do what they did uh, that's not non-violence that's choosing uh, which kind of violence you prefer um, and who, who's doing the fighting and for what I'll give you another example of violence two weeks ago the father of a child in my uh, daughter's school died suddenly and he died of an embolism and do you know why he died of an embolism because he was having an operation on his Achilles tendon now in the past if you were in such a situation you would be in hospital for at least a couple of days and you would get I think it's called Eprin which is a a blood diluting chemical which is injected into patients at risk of embolism and they're kept under observation had there not been cuts in the NHS of the last 20 years that father of my daughter's friend would be alive instead he's dead because he was sent home the same day a nurse who was also a parent of another child at the school explained to me that this is a, a, a risk now remember this when you, when you go to hospital next time that's violence and that's violence in the name of profit yes because we don't want to spend the money on the health service but there's plenty of money for the bombs to go to Iraq there's a priority here it's not a question about um, uh, who, you know these good people fighting for democracy and all the rest of it it's a class society and there is profit I understand profit as money other kinds of profits uh, material gain Let's, let's put it that way um, the problem is you see for that man not to die they would have had to keep him in hospital for at least two days under observation I actually spoke to a Nigerian doctor last week and I explained it to him and he was aghast at the idea that somebody with an, an operation like that is not kept at least 24 hours under observation and yet I said well it's, 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 that's the NHS for you they are putting at risk ordinary people's lives why? because of profit there is no other reason um, and that is a violent society surely that is violence um, removing the father of those of those children on the, on the, uh, the, the, the Russian revolution there were I mean, it's historically accounted for it, not Marxist historians bourgeois historians have, account, have, have recounted the number of armies that attacked Russia and the reason they attacked Russia was not for democracy they were defending the Tsarist regime which if you remember the famous event in Odessa when he sh- the, 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 the kind, nice Christian Tsar had ordinary poor peasant shot, disarmed peasant shot by, uh, by his army. And uh, that's, that's where the violence first originated, the violence of class society, and the revolution was defending itself against that. Had the German revolution succeeded in 1918, had the Italian revolution in 1920 succeeded, they wouldn't have been able to send the 21 armies against Russia because they'd have to be fighting their own working class and there would have been a far more peaceful transition to a different kind of society rather than what we had in, um, in, 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 uh, in, in uh, the Soviet Union. Um, the question of atheism is true. Y- you actually got a point. I mean, I was saying, I'm an atheist, I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe there's a God. 
but you see I turn it the other way around you prove to me there's a God and I'll consider it oh no I can't exactly that's my whole point yes <laughs> now the point is this in science in science, in science if somebody comes up with a theory about anything whatever theory so it's a hypothesis is you test it and test it and test it and if if concrete real experience disproves it eventually you say well yeah uh, if I throw an apple up in the air it's going to fall back down because